Nous allons parler d'obsolescence programmée. We're going to talk about programmed obsolescence. In 1962, Von Spack had published The Art of Waste. In this book, he described aesthetic obsolescence. We're all aware of that. It's advertising, which makes us want to replace a product with another while the product we have is still functional. I want to replace this cell phone with another while this cell phone still works. It's the aesthetic or cultural obsolescence. Then there's functional obsolescence, and then finally there's programmed obsolescence. And in the consumer code in France, programmed obsolescence is not only recognized as an offense, but it is defined very precisely. The definition is a set of techniques through which a marketer aims to deliberately reduce the lifespan of a product in order to increase its replacement rate. This definition is unique in the sense that France is the first country to recognize programmed obsolescence as an offense. And it can be defined by three elements. First of all, a material element. Programmed obsolescence is a set of techniques. Second, an intentional element. The marketer must deliberately aim to reduce product's lifespan. And third, there is a mobile. Of the, for these techniques used deliberately, it is to try to increase the rate of replacement. So France has recognized programmed obsolescence, not only recognized it as an offense, but also associated penalties of up to two years of prison or 300,000 euros in fines, which can which can be actually extended to 5% of uh, the average annual revenues of a company. So a very big fine, in addition to the reputational impact, of course. On the basis of recognition of programmed obsolescence, a number of uh, actions have been, in, uh, have been placed, a number of... Uh, complaints against a, a, the manufacturer of a printer, for instance, by a number of NGOs. And in December 2017, a forum published a post by a forum user that demonstrated that his iPhone, Apple branded phone, had a lower performances after an update to the operating system. And based on this user post, a website, Geekbench, You will find the information on the MOOC and published a benchmark comparison of several thousand iPhones and their performance pursuant to the updates of the operating system. The results were very clear quantitatively. There was a drop in the phone's performance after an update of the OS for some models and for some updates of the OS. After these two posts on the web and uh, the coverage in the media, Apple felt obliged to acknowledge in late December 2017 that indeed the updates of its OS for some models and some updates did reduce the performance of their phones, but explained this not by saying that they are trying to get people to replace their phones, but that it was necessary to prevent the iPhones from stopping unexpectedly. So Apple, according to them, were trying to guarantee uh, the best user experience. But another point of view was expressed when Hop decided to take Apple France to the courts and say that Apple, first of all, acknowledged that the updates deteriorate the phone's performance, but there, that there is indeed lower performance after the updates. And based on that, and on other elements, the fact that these updates very often happen when a new model of iPhone is launched. And according to the NGO, these uh, updates are deliberately designed to reduce the lifespan of a phone to increase their replacement. Apple denies this and published two papers that you can find on the web. First, a message to its customers about the battery and performance, and then 
full Donc, battery and performance. Of the iPhone, a number of decisions taken to facilitate the replacement of batteries and therefore to expand and extend an iPhone's lifespan, for instance, by reducing the price to be paid to change a battery. Today, the uh, court case will take place and is still underway, and we do not know what the result will be. But what we do know is that the expectations of society uh, for the extension of a product's lifespan are real. iFixit, for instance, an independent initiative, independent from Apple or Hop, is well trained and you can access this platform free of charge on the web. And it provides users with a number of tutorials to allow them to fix uh, their telephone or all sorts of other electronic products. Here you can see uh, the tutorial about the replacement of the battery for the iPhone 6. And all of these tutorials are available and all of the tools that can help you to replace parts yourself, of specific screwdrivers, for instance, are available and can be ordered. This is an, an initiative that shows that programmed obsolescence and, more broadly, the lengthening of a product lifespan is an issue for consumers. Culturally, programmed obsolescence and three types of obsolescences are recognized by a number of initiatives. For instance, Serge Latouche's book, Bon pour la casse, Good for Trash, de describes, in his opinion, the certain cases of programmed obsolescence. The film, Ready to Throw, Ready to Discard, Prêt à jeter, describes the story of the concept and shows, according to its director, cases of obsolescence. And websites such as uh, uh, Hops publishes a certain number of resources and initi initiatives to prove programmed obsolescence. Uh, which helps to raise the expectations of society in terms of making more sustainable and better designed products that are also more repairable. So that is what hap is happening in the field of programmed obsolescence in France, which, as you would understood, things are going to change in future. What do you think the products are the, where one could demonstrate programmed obsolescence? Oh, 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 oh,